15 million people are at risk of sudden death from anaphylaxis. We were getting ready to go to Boston for her uh, 16th birthday. For her 16th birthday, right, in December, uh, December 14th, 2013. 20 minutes later, a friend came downstairs and said she was having uh, difficulty breathing. Uh, I dialed 911. Uh, and in the six minutes it took uh, the emergency services to get here to our home, uh, Abby went from sitting upright uh, to on the floor with a family friend starting CPR. I met Abby's parents and Abby the morning after her arrival in the hospital and cared for Abby and her family over the next three or four days. At the end of that admission, Abby had succumbed to complications from prolonged cardiac arrest and uh, the anaphylactic reaction. We made the very difficult decision uh, to take her off of life support uh, on December 18th, 2013, and she passed away uh, that day. There's a huge amount of ambiguity in the, in the detection phase of anaphylaxis. She was getting ready to go out for her 16th birthday party. No, there's no way she would have admitted something was really wrong. Um, and, you know, we've spoken to some adults in the same, they don't want to make a scene. The longer your delay to get that epinephrine in, uh, the, the higher risk you are at a, at a terrible outcome. We realized we had to do something. There was something else that could be done here. About three weeks after Abby had passed away, I got an email saying that the Benfords had wanted to meet me. They wanted my input as to how could they give back to science. When I heard this story from the parents, I told them that perhaps for the research that they wanted to do with the foundation, they could fund work that would be able to develop a non-invasive wearable device that could sense anaphylaxis and inject epinephrine automatically if needed, and perhaps even call 911. Ben Matthews gave a talk at our retreat and told this story, and, and you know, people were speechless. It was, it was moving. And this seemed like a really clinically relevant problem. That was strike zone. For us to develop a device that can detect anaphylaxis in its early stages, we need data from people who are having an allergic reaction, preferably a serious one. That's really hard to get. We started attacking that problem with clinical studies and basic product development and, and prototype development. We have a very diverse staff here at the Beast, and we pulled in people with different types of skills, mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, software developers, clinicians and assemble a team based on people who had the best skills for the job but also people who were excited. So I'm responsible for the development of the biosensors. Uh, we're trying to pick up some uh, biomarkers that might be secreted by the body during an allergic reaction. So the goal is to connect all those sensors together through a mobile app via Bluetooth, for example, type communication. When this element will uh, detect some changes, things like temperature, uh, change in skin response, or change in cardiac rhythm, to make sure that it's a proper allergic response, it could trigger a second element, a second biosensor that will actually measure biomarkers such as histamine being released by your body. And when those two elements agree, uh, we'll have the third element, the automated injector that will inject epinephrine automatically uh, to the patient. The biggest hurdle I have on the biosensor side is really reaching the sensitivity that we need for the histamine sensor. We manage to increase the sensitivity of conventional sensors by a factor of about 1,000. There's very little sensors available off the shelf to do what we want, and so we've had to start from scratch. We use conventional microfabrication techniques based on photolithography, for example, and, and metal evaporation and patterning techniques. Then each sensor needs to be functionalized, and for that we uh, deposit enzymes or proteins onto the sensors to actually be able to detect histamine. Everybody at the VEAST, including myself, is interested in doing work that can make a difference. You walk into the lab where they're developing this device. There's a couple of photographs of, of Abby that they printed off from our website. Why are we here for Abby? Having Abby somehow present with us uh, during the day when we do our work is something that really touches us. I personally, I feel really pushed to do the best that I can. And it also made it much more personal and meaningful, I think, for our own staff because they could see how, how much this would mean for not only this family, but other families who have a similar sort of problem. So I think it's really been a special experience. And if we can make this work, I think it's going to be a, a wonderful success story. To have something um, invented 
that would have saved her life, to have that named after her, and to have her memory or her name on other people's lips, that, that speaks to me because gives me, I think, us a lot of peace.